Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we love you tonight, God. I want to tell you, I want to share something that I saw while we were praying, while they were leading us in worship. And thank you for leading us in worship, you and Sister Langford. And I saw Grayson up here. That's right. I know he can sing. Yeah. Hallelujah. But God's going to give us the victory. I mean, it sounds so simple, don't it? We're going to see a victory. Yeah, While we were... I, I feel the Holy Ghost. My Lord, I was standing right over here, and while they were leading us, I saw a, a big mountain. And, I, and on one side of the mountain, I saw the church. And on the other side of the mountain, I saw a... A, uh, a host of people, Come on now. souls, and hey, in my spirit, in my mind, I saw God move that mountain yeah. out of the way, hallelujah, and I saw those souls making it over to the house of God, Jesus said if you had faith, that you would say unto this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea, and if you doubt not, would you agree with me for just a minute that God's going to do it in this place? Lord, remove that mountain. Remove it, God. It's a barrier between the souls. Lord, remove it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We believe we got faith right now. Bring them souls in, God. If you believe that, clap your hands with me. Hallelujah. God's going to do it. I want you to get your Bibles. You know, hey. yeah, can go. I yes, you can. Did you said that. Come on. Been on me for a minute. We got in here. Last week I spoke at our mother-daughter banquet, and I spoke about a thought that we that I had that I I seen a news article on Fox News about how the mothers in Ukraine got upset and. President of Russia, Putin, because he was sending, oh, uh, I'm sorry, not the Ukraine mother, the Russian mother got upset because he was sending their sons and fathers and, you know, their grandsons to war, and they didn't feel like it was necessary, and everyone was telling them there was nothing they could do about it, this is it, this is law, this is what we do, he ordered, we send them, well, those mothers formed, they united, and they formed together a boundary, and they wouldn't let those men even cross that boundary to go to the entrance of where they're supposed to go to line up to enter in to, you know, say, hey, I'm here to serve. And I walked in here tonight, and it was a sense of familiarity, not because I know all of y'all, not because it's family, but because God's spirit. And I'm sure walking around with more church and I'm sitting here just then, but it's because the church is our mother. The church is our mother. It is time for our mothers to unite and arm up, get them up, and form that boundary and say, hey, we're not letting them go without another self. Yeah. This is the wall. This is the way it stops. And when he started speaking about the mountain, when he started saying that just then, I said, that's it, Lord. That's that boundary. That mountain, we're right there. We're that boundary behind that mountain. We're not letting them go back into the world. They're stopping right here. You're going to move the boundary, and we're going to form the boundary. And between here and there, they're coming straight to you. And I believe that. I believe that souls are coming. I believe there's a harvest to be had in the Lord. Thank you, God. 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 God said, we're two or three are gathered in my name. I am in the midst. Right. God don't need big numbers. Yeah, right. Hey, he was with Adam and Eve in the garden. Yeah. He was with Noah and Shem and Ham. Yeah. God was with one man that went into Egypt, Joseph. One man went in and a million went out. Oh, hey, right. God knows what he's doing. Yeah. And he don't work on our kind of man. Hey, God's math is way better than ours. Hallelujah. Let's go to the word of the Lord. 
Genesis chapter 40, verses 12 through 14. Genesis chapter 40, verses 12 through 14. Hallelujah. And you don't have to go there, but you can put your thumb on it. Because it will be on down in the notes, but 1 Samuel 16, 7. But uh, my main verse is going to be Genesis chapter 40, verse 12 through 14. And I hope you brought your Bible because it's like a good knife. You always need to have it with you. You need to make sure you, you, need, you need to make sure that, that you're sharp in it. So you can sharpen a knife, but the Word is what sharpens you. Because it's sharp as a two-edged sword. I give honor to my brother-in-law. I can't go any further without doing that. I thank God for him tonight. My sister-in-law and their family. I would not be where I'm at if it wasn't for my brother-in-law. I give honor where honor is due. I thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you. I appreciate him because you don't know what I've been through. He knows a lot because I talk to him. He's a friend. He's my brother-in-law. He's my brother. Brother. Take the in-law out. He's my brother. Hallelujah. I love them, and I'm excited about what God is doing. Listen, if you found your Bible, say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's get into the Word of God. The Bible said in the Word of God, And Joseph said unto him, This is the interpretation of it. The three branches are three days. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thine head and restore thee into thy place. And thou shalt deliver Pharaoh's cup into his hand after the former manner when thou wast his butler. But think on me when it shall be well with thee and show kindness, I pray thee unto me and make mention of me unto Pharaoh and bring me out of this house. Would you lift your hands and pray with me for just a minute? Father, in the name of Jesus, God, this is your word. It's already anointed. But Lord, I pray, God, that, that your spirit rest upon not only my shoulders, but my mouth. Lord, help me, God, to give a word to these precious people tonight. These are your wonderful people. This is your peculiar treasure, God. These are the apple of your eye. God, I want you to bless them tonight, Father. Lord, anoint them to receive this word, God, and may you be glorified tonight, and may you be glorified in the days to come, God. Father, let your word go forth and not return, boy. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Let's clap our hands and be seen in the fear of God tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to preach. I'm going I'm to just try to do whatever God lets me do tonight with the help of the Holy Ghost and my title is going to be Delayed But Not Denied. Delayed. Delayed But Not Denied. And I'm sure that we could Google it and we could probably find that, that phrase somewhere on the internet. Come on. But it hadn't been preached on this wise. I can tell you that. Yes. And I, I come before you as a humble man tonight. But I know what it's like to have promises. I know what it's like to have dreams and I know what it's like to have visions and words from God that are yet fulfilled but God says that you may be delayed but you're not going to be denied God knows what he's doing tonight after the day we had I had another message that I was going to preach tonight and when we we took my brother's camper down to Tioga to the campground and while we were going down the interstate we had two tires blow out on the left side, on the same side. Now, the first miracle was is that we didn't have a wreck. Right. Because two on a camper like that, I mean, Bad. it shouldn't have happened that way, but it did. God had his hand on us. Yeah, did. And while we was out there, in the, and it was hot today, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and while we were out there taking, trying to jack it up and trying to change the tires and all that, I mean, we were in a little bit of duress. It was like, we got to get this done. We got to get the camper over to the campground, and we got to get this so we can get back. And 
And the Lord reminded me. I had some little notes scribbled together. And the Lord had given me a message months ago. Uh, and He had given me this. And I had kind of forgotten about it. And while I was sitting in front of the air conditioner gasping for air, <laughs> the Lord reminded me. He said, delayed but not denied. Come on. He said, go to my people tonight and you preach it to them. You do the best you can. Right. And I'm going to do the best I can with the help of God tonight. Yeah. Because I know that I'm not the only one in here tonight that's got promises that are yet delayed. Come on. I thought about Daniel and when he began to pray, Ah, the Lord began to move as soon as he prayed, yeah. But that prince of Persia said, no, it ain't going to happen. But my goodness, tonight, hey, Michael the archangel got involved, and when he gets involved, things is going to happen. Yeah. Hallelujah. The Lord is with us tonight, church. God's got his hand on you tonight. Joseph had been given a promise that one day he'd be the leader of the people God had shown him that. He had given him that promise. We all know the familiar story tonight. He told the dream to his brothers. And because of his dream, they kindled a hatred against him. They began to hate his guts really bad because the Father was giving him favor. Can I say tonight that in the before I even get started, that all of us, are the children of God tonight. Yeah. Uh -huh. That we all have the same Father tonight. In the New Testament, in this covenant of the New Testament blood, we all are sons and daughters with the same Father. Hallelujah. So we don't ever have to, to be this way like they were. I mean, God, He has a plan for every one of us. And we don't ever have to feel any kind of negativity toward our brother or sister. Because God has a purpose and a plan for your life. God has a promise yes, God. for you. God. The Lord has a great calling yes. for every one of us. Because we've all been called. The Bible said go into all the world and preach the gospel right. yes. to every creature. And do what? Make disciples unto me. Amen. We've all been called. We've right. all been sanctified. We've all been anointed tonight. Hallelujah. Right. So we don't ever have to do what they did but they done it and they sold Joseph into slavery. The first thing they did was they put him in the pit. You know the familiar story tonight. And they said, well, let's put a little goat's blood on him. Let's make him look dead or whatever the animal was. And all of this happened. And Joseph ended up in Egypt. I mean, one man went into Egypt with a promise. And the delay began, church. But we know the end of the story tonight. We know he wasn't denied. Even though when he, he became a prisoner in Potiphar's house, accusations came. Hey, the first thing, whenever he went into Potiphar's house, he was given favor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then what? Accusation. Hey, the devil, he's the accuser of the brethren tonight. But he's a liar and the father of lies. And he ain't got no place in the house of God or amongst the people of God. We're the people of God, devil. We take authority over you. We command you to go back into the pit where you came from. Our God is with us. And if God be with us, who can be against us? Hallelujah tonight. Your promise may be delayed, but it's not denied. God is going to bring it to pass. He's going to bring it to pass. Some of you are going to see it come to fruition in a few days. It's not going to be many days hence. I saw that faith book and I began to think I preached a message one time. I took, I went and bought a bunch of those journals and I, and I can't even remember the name of the message, but the gist of it was, and I think some of you ought to do it because the Bible said to write the vision and make it plain right. and write it down on tablets, yes. my Lord, because it will come to pass. That's right. And I had them write down the promises. And I called it the promise book or the faith book. I think I called it the faith book. Just like what y'all says. And I had them lay it on the altar. Amen. And testimony after testimony after testimony has come to pass. Jesus said that if you believe it, it can happen. Hallelujah. Amen. Calling things that are not as though they were. All you've got to do is use the Word. Yeah. You've got the best weapon of all time. You've got the Word of God. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. 
We know the story, the butler, the baker, both of them in prison with Joseph. Joseph interprets the dreams. The baker is hanged, but the butler has restored his place. Yeah. Joseph tells him, remember me. Yeah. Two excruciating years pass. Two more years. Hallelujah. Two more. It goes on and on. It probably felt like it was forever. Yeah. It was probably like one of them POW prisoners over in Vietnam. I mean, it was probably like, this is never going to end. I'm never going to get out of this. But that, see, whenever we're in the prison or when we feel like we're in the prison, that's the time whenever we have got to, we cannot let the devil whisper in our ear. Whenever we're down to, to our last whatever you want to call it, whenever we're down and out, that's when God's up to something. That's when He's about to do a work. And you got to tell yourself that. Whenever you're down the most, that's when you got to shake yourself and you got to say it's about to happen. God's up to something. Right. Hallelujah. And that's what happened. Joseph, I can imagine, I can just see him in the prison there. I can, I, in my mind, I just see him going back as a little boy and, and thinking of those sheaves falling before him and his lifting up. I, I can just imagine that he took the promise that was in his heart and he just replayed it over and over and over and over in his mind because he had to do that so that he would be able to make it out of that place because he knew that one day he knew that one day that the butler would talk to he knew he That's the right. butler was a man of his word That's right. and he knew that and he knew that the day would come whenever the butler would go to Pharaoh and it finally happened you know the story well I'm not going to read it all to you but we recount it tonight because Pharaoh had the dreams. He had the dreams of the, of the fat cows, of the lean cows. And he, and he did just what the world always does. He, he went to the sorcerers of the world. He went to the false prophets. He went to the false doctrines of the world. He, he went to the places where they don't know the answers. He went to the bar room. He, what, you name it. He went there. He done what a lot of people, unfortunately, children of God do. He went everywhere but to the source. Hallelujah. I've been guilty of it. Come on. I'm going to tell you something. When I preach, I preach to me. I, I got all my fingers pointing at me because I'll wring my hands and I'll go everywhere oh, yeah. but to the Lord. And God says, come unto me, yeah. all you that are weary yes. and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Yeah. Take oh. my yoke. My burden is light. Amen. Learn of me. Oh, Hallelujah. Oh. God knows what He's doing. And then after all that, the butler. Oh, the butler. Oh, yeah. He said, wait a minute, there's a man. And he interprets dreams. He's a Hebrew, which means he was a child of God. Oh, Hallelujah. Yeah. And he said, he can interpret those dreams. Go and fetch him. Pharaoh said, go and get him. The Bible said that whenever Joseph was coming out of the prison, that he arose. He washed his face and he shaved his yeah, beard. That's right. And he put on new clothes. He did that because I'm going into the king's court. Right. Oh, well, Hallelujah. I'm going to the place where promises come true. I'm going in front of the king tonight. Yes, God. Delayed but not denied. And God delivered. He hastened him out of the prison. Put him in command over the whole thing. You know the story well tonight. His promise had come to pass. My God, it had finally come to pass. God is faithful to His Word tonight, church. He is faithful. Faithful as He can call it. Who also will do it. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise God. Consider the life of David. The little shepherd boy. The long journey to his kingship. David was somewhere between 10 and 15 years old when he was anointed king. When Samuel was called by God to anoint a king. David didn't even call Je uh, David. Jesse didn't even call David. He left him behind. He left him in the field. He left him in a place where an obscure place. See, that's the way the world works. The Bible said that the world looks on the outside. They look on the outward appearance. They look at the things that are shiny and the things that look big and the things that look strong. See, Jesse knew he had some boys that were tall. He had some boys that were good looking. He had some men 
Right. Yeah, I bet one of them's the king. Come on. But no, that Samuel. Samuel had this to say, but the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or the height of his stature because I have rejected him. For God sees not as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart tonight. Church, all we got to do is get our heart right tonight and God will make all of our dreams and visions and goals and promises come to pass. Hallelujah. He's faithful to his word tonight. God knows what He's doing. God had rejected all of His brothers, but had accepted Him because God knew David's heart. God knew David, and He knows you, and He knows me. He knows you, Brother Paul. He knows you, Brother Munson. The Bible said, and all you sisters, and you, Brother Valdez, you and Sister Valdez, and Brother and Sister Lankford, while you was yet in your mother's womb, my God, He had a plan for all your days. Jeremiah 29, 11 said that the Lord, He's the one. He's going to prosper you and give you a future and a hope. God knows what He's doing tonight. Hallelujah. And God knew that David was a man after God's own heart. And God knows that there's people in here tonight, that there's brothers and sisters in the Lord in here tonight that have God's best intentions in mind. He knows that you're people of God after His own heart tonight. God says, people that are after my own heart, I'm going to give them the keys to the kingdom. I'm going to give them the kingdom of God. Hey, it's the Father's good pleasure to give unto you the kingdom. I'm telling you, God's going to give you the kingdom, church. Hallelujah. And I'm not talking about some kind of something that fades away. I'm not talking about a temporal. No, I'm talking about eternal. But we're building something here that's not going to fade away. Hallelujah. God's looking at your heart tonight and He sees all of that. I'll never forget many years ago when me and Judy had been married. We'd been married about three years and, and it was around 2004. We were young. We were trying to begin our family. We were struggling to make ends meet. It's a common thing with young people, you know? That God, that, that, that a struggle just begins and ensues. It's, it's not because we had done anything wrong. It's just because that we had not gotten to a place yet. That see, a process has to take place. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sometimes, you know what? Uh, May the 7th, 1999, that's my Holy Ghost birthday. Amen. I got the Holy Ghost 23 years ago. Hey, I'm 50 years old in the flesh, but I'm 23 years old tonight in the Holy Ghost. And God's just getting started in my life. I'm telling you. But I remember I was working five jobs. Long hours. I was tired. I was weary. You can ask Judy. I mean, some of the jobs were labor jobs. And you know, folks, we live in the state of Louisiana. So, I mean, I was digging turtle eggs. I was catching turtles. That was two different jobs. I was catching turtles. And then I was digging turtle eggs. I was commercial fishing. I was, I was a parole officer at the time, working over in Alexandria. Oh, uh, matter of fact, Jeffrey Gaspard, he was my boss. He's from a boss parish. And I was doing that, and I was working for Frito-Lay. I was picking up chips and putting them on a the shelf on the weekend. Saturday and Sunday, I did that. I was a fence builder. I worked for Judy's uncle. I built fence. I built gates, I tended to cattle, I hauled hay. So, I mean, but I was trying to take care of my family. Yeah. And the man of God came to me, one of, the, one of the lay ministers, as a matter of fact. And he came up to me one night in church, and he prayed for me. He said, God shows me tonight that the Lord's about to give you one job that's going to be better than all of those other ones combined. Amen. And I received that word that night. And I believed it. And it didn't happen the next day, Brother Paul. It didn't happen the next day, Brother Munson. It took a while. And I mean, I began to think, where's the promise? What's, when is this going to happen? I've got to have this job. I believe this. God, I'm tired. Lord, I'm wore out. And I'll never forget that we were, Judy was at a ladies' conference. And it was with Sister Talbert. And I tell you, an anointed woman of God. Yes. And I was struggling. I'm talking about I was struggling. 
Matter of fact, that day I was cutting willow trees from around the pond. Is it hard if I do it this way? I know I was screaming and hollering the last time I came. Probably nobody could even understand me, but anyway, I was so excited. But there I was, and I got so tired that day. I remember Judy was at the ladies' meeting, and I was, I just saw the man I was working for. I saw him, and I saw his sons, and they were, they were doing what men and their sons should do. They were having fun. They were enjoying life. And trust me tonight, I didn't begrudge them. I turned the saw off and I sat down. I just sat down. I was so tired. And I looked at them and I smiled. And I'll never forget. I got down on my knees. I got up, moved over a little bit. And I lifted my hands. And I said, God, I said, Lord Jesus, why am I a slave in my father's house? Come on. And let me tell you something. All I can tell you is I touched the heart of God. All I can tell you is I touched the heart of God that day. God. Judy came back. Sister Tauber told her. Said God's about to tell your husband. I see him struggling. He's 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 about he's he can't stand it no more. He's in a bad way. But God said that there's a door that's about to open. Yeah. And the Lord's fixing to take care of this. And you tell him that the devil's going to try to trick him because there's going to be one door that's going to open. When that first door opens, you tell him to go through that door because immediately there's going to be more doors open. But when that first... See, I learned the last time. Don't, don't go to that one. <laughs> Devil, you ain't getting me again. Man. But anyway, but that's that's what the Lord said, and man, I broke down. I was, well, I was working for an apostolic man with the potato chip company, and he'd been promising me a one. You know, some of them are pretty good jobs. Yeah. And I thought, well, I bet that's it. I bet that's fixing to happen. So, and and he was a good man. So listen, real close. I don't. I I, I have nothing but love for him to this day. Uh, but he told me, he said, if you ever get tired on Sunday and you need to go to church, he said, you call me on Saturday and I'll, I'll come and I'll work for you on Sunday so you can go to church. Well, all this had happened, and it was weeks later, and you know what? I said, I want to go to the house of God. I went four months without a day off. And that ain't a whole lot for you elders because I know some of y'all have worked a lot harder than I have. Right. But I was tired physically, mentally, and especially spiritually. I was worn down. And I called that brother. And I, he's a brother. And, uh, and I called him and I said, I need off tomorrow. And he went off on me. He said, you, need to, you either need to decide that you're going to work or that you want to go to church. He said, I need an answer. And, I, and I, didn't, I didn't know what to do. It just threw me for a loop. I hung up. Me and Judy talked for less than a minute. She said, call him back, tell him you're going to the house of God tomorrow. <laughs> hey, there ain't nothing like a good wife. <laughs> he that hath a wife hath a good thing. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. That's another message. But anyway, so here we were. <laughs> here we were. So I called him back, and he said, that's fine. He said, you just go ahead and you go to church tomorrow. Come on. Monday morning, I want a resignation. Wow. And I said, you got it. So I did get mad. I, you know what? I'm a man. I'm flesh. He made me mad, Brother Munson. And Monday morning, hey, I went to church. I got what I needed from God. The Lord touched me. But I got in there that Monday, and I was mad. I went in there, and I typed up my resignation letter, and it was four or five pages long, Brother Lakin. I laid it on him. I'm talking about you rascal, you, you said you was going to do this. You said you was going to do that. I'm telling you, I was laying it on thick. And I went in there to the fax. We still use faxes back then. And I would put it in the fax machine. And I'm going to tell you the, the value of having an elder in your life in just a second. But I, I, I kept trying to fax that thing, and it wouldn't go through. And I was getting so aggravated. Boy, I'd punch it, but I'd dial that number. And... 
hit the button and it wouldn't go through. And I was like, what is going on? Yeah. Why won't this go through? Yeah. About that time, keep where you at. Stay where you at. Turn around. <laughs> About that time, now turn around. Oh, it was Brother Carmouche. And he said, what are you trying to do? He went to POA. I said, well, I said, this guy, he run me in the ground over there at Frito Lay. And, and boy, I went off and he said, leave it, leave it alone. Let's go eat lunch. He said, don't send it. Quit trying to send it. And I said, okay. Because I, I don't talk back to my elders. And I wasn't raised in church, but I don't talk back to my elders. But anyway, so we went, we ate lunch. We're sitting there, and Brother Carmen said, what are you trying to do? And I said, well, I'm trying to send this resignation letter. And I went through the whole story with him. He said, this is what we're going to do. He said, we're going to pray about it. Whenever we get back, you're going to go, you're going to type out a nice letter. You're going to say, thank you, Mr. So-and-so. I don't want to say his name. <laughs> but anyway, thank you for the opportunity. It's been such a blessing to work for you. Thank you for giving me a job when I needed a job. I hope that we can still be friends going forward. And it was real nice and it was real cordial. Thank God for the elder. Right. My Lord. Jesus. I could get emotional thinking about that. Because how many times would I have made a wrong decision? Yes. Yeah. But I got back and I typed it up. I showed it to him and he said, that's great, it's perfect. Let's go in there together. So we went in together. Put it in the machine, Brother Lankford. Da, 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 da. Hit the button. It went right through. <laughs> Thank God for his mercy. Because I could have I would have I would have been wrong. I would have been wrong. And the blessings would have been what? They would have been shut off. Because you know what? If I do the right thing the wrong way, God ain't gonna bless me. I can do. I got to do the right thing the right way, and then God will bless me. Hallelujah. No sooner than it got through, no sooner than the facts went through, I heard the phone ringing in my office because my office was just right there around the corner, and I knew it was my office. So I took off running, and the, on the phone call. Well, some people in Lafayette. And they said, look, we got your resume, and we'd like for you to uh, do an interview with us. And I said, okay. So they talked. They said, you got five minutes? I said, sure. So they went through a, a discussion about what the job was, asked me if I'd ever worked on drilling rigs and all that, and I had. So they said, well, look, we need you. we'd like for you to come down here tomorrow. We'd like for you to come down tomorrow, and we'll do a formal interview. And I said, okay, well, let me go talk to my boss. So I went and talked to Mr. Jeffrey, and he knew that I was struggling. He said, look, he said, take the day off, go down, see what it is, and then come back, and we'll figure it out. Okay. So I went down, and I, I showed up in the place. And while we were driving to the location, I got another call from a guy from Gina. He said, Parker Drilling's hiring roughnecks right now. He said, go down to the office in New Iberia. He said, you can get the job right now. And I told Judy, I said, well, this other job's a safety job. I said, I could go over to the one in New Iberia. I got the job because this guy's a superintendent. He's done made the call. All I got to do is go in and I can get that job, work my way up because there's a whole lot more prestige, Brother Munson, with being a drilling superintendent or being a driller or being a company man Hey, a safety man, that's just a low life in people's eyes. Come on. But you know what? God don't look at that kind of right. stuff. That's right. And Judy said, no, we're not doing that. Thank God for a wife. Thank God. He that hath a wife hath a good thing. Come on. I'm going to say that a lot. Come on, you say amen tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. See, we know what to do. Hey, we're not crazy. Anyway, we talk about other stuff too. <laughs> but Judy said no she said that's not what the prophecy was yeah. <laughs> and I went over look long story short it's changed my life my salary yes 
I made it to where I made more than all five or six or seven of those other jobs. Yeah. Hey, the promise was delayed, but it was not denied. God opened the door at the right time. Hallelujah. He knows what He's doing tonight, church. God's here tonight. He's with us tonight. He knows what He's doing. It doesn't matter if the world overlooks us. It doesn't matter what the twists and turns are. It doesn't matter what the barriers are. It doesn't matter what the mountains are. None of that matters tonight. What matters is, is what is God talking to you about? Right. What is the promises of God yes. that He has given to you as an individual yes. and that He has given to this church as a corporate body? No, it doesn't matter if everybody's not here tonight because the vision and the promises and the prophecies and the words of God that the Lord has spoke over this church, it don't matter who's here tonight because God said they may be delayed, but they're not denied. And in my time, and I'm going to bring it to pass, Hallelujah. Yes, Receive that, Brother Paul. Hallelujah. Right now, God knows what He's doing. In the times and the seasons, He said it's not for you to know when. Right. It's, it's His place. It's His business. He knows what He's doing. He's a good God tonight. Hallelujah. And I can't wait to see what God's going to do with this people. I can't wait to see. First Chronicles 26, 26. 29, 26 through 29. Thus David the son of Jesse reigned over all Israel. And the time that he reigned over Israel was 40 years. Seven years reigned he in Hebron. And 30 and 3 years reigned he in Jerusalem. You think it's a coincidence that it was 33? Jesus was 33 and some odd. Hey, Jesus is the root and the offspring of David and of Jesse. He come out of the house of David and he's here tonight and he says, hey, I don't care what you've been up against. I don't care what the barrier is. I don't care what the accusation is. It don't matter to me what the problem is. I'm bigger than your problem. David said, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Don't magnify your problem. Don't magnify the devil. Hey, magnify your God tonight. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Let's give God the praise for just a minute. Clap your hands to the Lord in this house. God knows what He's doing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We might be delayed, but we're not denied. My God. The Lord's got better things. Stand with me. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Hey, we might be delayed a little bit tonight. Hey, the scoffers say, where's the sign of His coming? Where's the promise of His coming? Let them scoff all they want to. Look at them down there. Oh, they go to that church and they do this and not very many of them. Let them scoff because our name is written in the Lamb's book. This is the house of prayer right here. Hey, it may be a dinner of thieves down the road, but this is the house of prayer 